Hello everyone, this is DJ Color TV coming at you. Um, and I just got the Tractor Control X1. Now, if you know me, you know I use Serato, so this is sort of an experiment uh, of sorts. It comes with a quick start guide that has way too many steps for being a quick start, a little CD that has installation files, $10 Beatport uh, gift certificate, which is nice. I'm sure I'll use that. And a massive guide. <clears throat> and not to mention the actual Control X1. This thing's really thin. Um, something to note, there's a carrying case that kind of props it up to the same height as the mixer, and that does not come with the this out of the box you have to buy it all right so i've had some time to play with the uh, tractor control x1 from uh, native instruments as i mentioned earlier the the bag is kind of necessary i got it kind of propped up in its original box right here which is putting it about in the same same area as my mixer so that's that's nice um until i can get the carrying case or something different but um Serato users, if you are using this, it is not necessarily plug and play. You're going to need to go through some setup stuff. I'm not sure how it works with Tractor, but I imagine it's a little bit easier to set up. So basically, it's kind of difficult. You got to install all the drivers. You got to install um, the programs that it comes with, and like the Native Instruments help desk thing, and also the uh, controller editor. That's probably the most important part. And I also had to register with Native Instruments and get all my updates through their little weird uh, uh, help site thing. Um, anyway, you're also going to need to get uh, MIDI Pipe, which I do believe is a free download. And uh, Conix kind of goes uh, goes along and tells you how to uh, set that up with the controller and everything. They're, they all kind of work differently. But basically what you're going to have to do is you go into these buttons uh, and if you're doing it from scratch you just kind of pick a button tell it what mode it's going to be whether it's toggle trigger gate or whatever else and um, and then you go into the actual program of say Serato in this case and then go into MIDI map mode and MIDI map it from there so that is the basics on how you have to set this thing up <clears throat> and one thing that I want to mention is that uh, if you want your buttons to light up like they do in Conix's video, you have to go into MIDI pipe and pull the in and out here and then make sure that you actually go file, save, and then your buttons will light up and they'll work correctly. All right? That's... Uh, one of the frustrating things I, I didn't realize uh, at first when I was setting this up. <clears throat> so once you have that done and you have all your stuff labeled here, you want to also possibly uh, have these triggers so that they stay lit when they're on. These are my uh, DJ effects. You can see them coming on and off here. Um, and one thing that you're going to need to do is in your control editor, you're going to need to click on these things, change them to toggle, all right? And then once you're in Serato, go to whatever button that you want to toggle on and off, click on MIDI map mode, hover over, and it needs to say relative on off, which is changeable by hitting the C button right here. So as you can see, you can toggle through. Uh, I think on lots of the... Uh, buttons it's just set to absolute but you need to toggle it back to on off if it's on absolute hitting it once will turn it on hitting it again will do nothing and hitting it a third time will turn it off just the light though it will actually toggle this on and off three times and it, that will be confusing <clears throat> also something to note is that if that is on by your mouse and you turn it off this color doesn't mean anything Serato is not sending a signal back to the mixer so you need to just make sure that your on button is on 
and uh, relates to what you're doing. Otherwise, it's a little confusing. Just something to check when you set up at a gig. <clears throat> so that being said, get out of MIDI map mode there. Uh, you basically basically get everything uh, set up how you like it. I have mine set up how I like it, and then you you start playing. And you have to keep uh, MIDI pipe open at all times in order to uh, see these guys light up. Um, but once you once you are done mapping your stuff within Serato and uh, you know within the uh, Native Instruments thing. You need to make sure that you have saved your settings here. The Color TV SSL mapping. I also have Conix and some other ones that I got um, from uh, Native Instruments. So I just hit save here and it saves to my old mapping. If I wanted to do a new one, I just hit save as or a completely new one, just hit new. <clears throat> and if you want to go to a different one, you just click it and then click load right here and that'll load that mapping onto, uh, essentially onto the tractor control. Alright, so coming out of that, now we got, um, we got the songs ready to play. Right, let's take you through the uh, way I have my controller set up. Just similar to the way this is supposed to be for tractor, the top half is for effects, these are my ons and offs, and these knobs here are regular potentiometers with a center click, which are nice so you can kind of tell where you are. So I can turn it on and have my filter sweep all the way up and all the way back, or I can just kill it whenever I want. Uh, this controls the beat right there. You can see it moving up and down so that uh, you know we'll go with different steps on the beat there. <clears throat> Um, this right here, I do believe it's supposed to be effects on for the whole thing, but I actually reprogrammed that to have uh, just reverse on on the song that's playing, so it censors it. So these are the effects. Uh, right here, it's your track load. Uh, you can scroll through, and then you push down, and that triggers the track to load on the left, and this triggers the track to load on the right. <clears throat> I actually want to change this to scroll through my crates, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. This changes from relative mode to internal mode, and also on the other side. I like to do this because, you know, if you're playing in a big club and you, you might want to make sure your needle doesn't skip, especially if the stage is bouncy or whatever, you want to change it to internal mode, and then when you're ready to mix, change it back. Uh, this is slight pitch up. Pitch bend, or sorry, pitch bend down, pitch bend up, <clears throat> pitch bend down, up, and then cues one, two, three, four, and also the uh, SP6 right here mapped onto these four buttons. So I can, uh, you know, play those real easy. DJ Kara TV. So you got that there. Um, you know, I also have the dicers, which I can also use to my advantage. Um, So you get the you get the point there. I can do it here or here. But something I didn't mention are these two buttons right here, which are my loop activate on a down click. Um, make sure that you put it on the right setting, and then you can change the loop length. And then once you come out of it, it stays at the same point, which is different than loop roll. If you go into loop roll here, I like to use the loop roll on the dicers. It's a little bit. Uh, better I think. Um, if you use the loop roll on this you have to hold it pressed down the entire time and turn it. It's kinda hard. So with this you just kinda hold the button you know if you wanna make it go roll down it'll then jump. I'm gonna turn this down so you can just see the waveform. Uh, let's go back to relative. Um, so let's say here, here, here. It still stays at the same place now jumps back into place versus this well Let's try that again. Versus this, and then it's when I let go, when I press this again, it's going to jump out. So let's do that again uh, with four, right here. Do 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 do. 
I'll continuing there, turning it down, turning it down, and then letting it go. It jumps back to the same place where it started. So that's <clears throat> that's pretty cool. You know, you got the two different ways to control it without having to switch back and forth. I don't have to hit the shift button or anything like that and forget my placement while I'm busy DJing. I just got my tools right where I want them. And I, I kind of like that. These uh, buttons here are a little bit redundant, but that's all right. Nobody's, uh, nobody's perfect. I mean, I could change these to be whatever I want, but I kind of like having the, the samples here real quick to, to launch. Um, that way I can keep my dicers in uh, loop roll mode, and I don't have to really change it to here, unless I want to. These are a little bit bigger, so I might want to bang on these instead of banging on these little buttons here if I want to sort of play out a beat. So, uh, let's do a little trick here. I'm going to use the loop roll to do somewhat of a build-up. I only have one hand here. Um, and I'm going to use my... Uh, ooh, that is the wrong one. I'm going to use my high-pass filter to make it sound kind of cool. So, let's get it lined up. I'm just going to go ahead and... Turn it on. I only have one hand. All right, here we go. <laughs> so there you go. That's, um... You know, a quick way to do a little build up with the loop roll. Or, no, that's uh, just regular loop. And, you know, you can also simulate that with the loop roll, too. And the turntable trick. Okay, so <clears throat> that's real quick, you know, how I wanted to uh, use this controller for build ups and loops and things like that. It's really easy to use, and the filters are just pretty cool in Serato, but I just hate using them on the actual keyboard. It's so annoying trying to, you know, do a filter like this and maybe a lung click or something. It's it's whack. But <clears throat> anyway, that's the Control X1. That's how I use it. So please check out nycelectro.com and all my other videos. I am DJ Color TV and thanks for stopping by. Peace out.